there. That should be that should fix it then. Well, that kind of sucks. Not that, not that it's recorded, but oh, there's someone actually watching. <laughs> okay, so now that actually things are actually working now. So for, I guess for the stream, I basically just made this body to like, represent the human shapes and sort of expanding them or just trying to explain them through by drawing on top of his drawings. So yeah, you can sort of like see, and obviously the, you can't really see it like too far not with here, but the, you can, it always comes to the arms, I guess. They're probably like supposed to be very like, sli oh, these are very small size drawings. Um, very like cylindrical. So you can like see like, they would always just like come down or at least like for, as for the basic shape, obviously uh, real arms don't really look like this, but you can like sort of like either like make, I guess maybe for this drawing, they kind of like, you could like put contour lines on here to like show the, the cylindricalness of the, the thing. And you can like sort of like see the top and the bottom. Um, and so like, usually if you end up drawing more like that, especially with this, like you can see like, like this part, this would probably be like where the um, like the, the two like piece, pieces of the arm connect. So like, you probably would want to make the that part of the muscle like curve in front of the arm to like show that sort of like um, perspective with it. Um, but yeah, I feel like I, mean, I guess I mean I don't know. I feel like I put this whole thing together, but I don't really know specifically how to like weave it all together with the drawings and stuff, but it's just like thinking about um, like the specific like shapes of things, like before you would draw like the, the actual like lines of the things themselves. Yeah. So like, like with this one where you like drew like straight from the reference, you know, definitely got like a lot more of it right, but at least, yeah. If you like can use like drawings like where you take reference from things like instead of like just drawing them normally you just kind of like s sketch out like the most basic like shape of things where like you say like oh this is where the like the side of the the body is and then this is where like the they like planned the middle of the body to be and so you can like like try th out things like that to like get like an idea of like what the artists are like trying to represent here so you have like the circular the cylindrical part of the arm like sticking out like that from there and so like Definitely, like that is like the sort of like way you would like you would most benefit from like using references, and especially with the head. I feel like the head is like the most um, the weirdest thing to get right, especially since apart from just like sticking out a lot more than you think it does. There's like a lot of different like ways to like shape it using like character design like traits and stuff. So like if you want something like very like um, very like f like uh, soft and cute, I guess you like sort of like put out the cheek a little bit. Like the head, like very round, like this. Basically, like Luca, I guess. All the Luca character designs pretty much fall into this category, where it's like, like that. And then you can also like do other things, like making a very like um, solid, um, blocky head for like a more masculine sort of like adult character design, where like the eyes are like very like small compared to everything else. And you have like a giant n like blocky nose instead of like a, a little bump, I guess. And that would be like a very, that like represent his own stuff, I guess. But basically, like the the sole part of the the head is like the 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 like the skull, like cranium part, where you like kind of like just like draw like a like a slightly like um, actually I guess it would be more like be more like a dome, I guess, if you really want to like think about it that way, where it's like this. Where it's like a this is like the where the brain is, and then the chin and stuff all like comes down from one side, not like entirely from like this side. It'll be like slightly off to one side if you want doing a, a a slightly side view, I guess. And you bring this part down to like represent the neck, which is kind of like much more behind everything else than it seems at first. And then the the bottom of the the other side of the neck like connects to that part. And this is usually like the the uh, top of the um, the top of the the chin, I guess, the jaw. The jaw is what I'm looking for. And that's where I usually put the ear. And then 
you know, if you draw a line right through the center of the, the face, that's used, like, uh, probably the most important part of the, part of like the sketching process, I guess. So you can like see where everything is since humans are all, all like symmetrical and you definitely want to like keep that sort of like symmetrical look unless you're specifically doing a character design that's like super asymmetrical for like the, that specific, specific purpose. And since this one's like so like off to one side, you have to draw like the, the nose like sticking out a lot more and probably crossing over one side of the face. Um, and then you'd have like, like, like this is always like around this area. It's like kind of like where you want to like indent the eye socket, I guess, then come out for the cheek. And then the nose more often than not actually covers the one of the eyes, I guess, but I never really like draw like that because it just looks kind of weird, but that's how it's supposed to be, I guess. And then you have the other eye, which is just like on one side. It's obviously not like super perfect because I haven't really like studied like reality like as much as I probably should have, but this is definitely like a, a better st like start to the, the construction of everything to make it all look more like solid and nor and stuff like that. Um, and then you have like the, the top of the eyebrow and like, a lot of stuff. One thing I've noticed about the eyebrows actually is that they connect pretty much. Like even when they're like, um, like, like sometimes like a character would be like super like sly looking, like where they have one eye, one brow down and then have the other eye like up. They would still kind of like create this sort of like flow with them where it's like, they wouldn't really like, like this one would come up a little bit on one side of this. I guess, I mean, it's much harder to describe when I don't actually have a good reference for that because I don't, I don't really do that my, well myself really, but, um, but yeah, that's, and then you obviously have like the mouth and stuff. The mouth is also one thing that kind of like sticks out more than I draw it because like the lips and stuff, they definitely like stick out a lot more than I draw them because I do like very cartoony stuff. But from this angle, it probably would be like sticking out a little bit, especially when someone, if the character was doing like a very like sort of like weird, um, like they're like they're um like the lips would be sticking out a lot more if they're like doing like a a very like I don't know like any kind of pose like this or they're like kind of like confused or something. Um, but yeah, that's like I feel like that's like all of the like the weird like complexities of the head that you really have to just like practice and like get down. But definitely like like trying to like. Um, break things down and like reverse engineer a drawing instead of just like drawing straight from something works the best when it comes to like actually learning from a reference. I'm actually gonna put back on window capture just to make sure that everything's like normal, I guess. But um, yeah, I feel like, I mean, I guess anything from that point on might as well just be like more specific questions um, because Everything like everything gets so like weird when like you try and like do a bunch of different like weirder character designs. Um, so I feel like actually yeah, I'm trying to pull up your thing. So yeah, I'm looking at your your thing now, and it does seem like you got pretty much the shape of the head down, even though you definitely seem to be like working with the um, the, the placement of the eyes. Um, I think, um, let's see. Actually, actually, if you want, you can t go up to the the um, the stabilizer in the top middle section of the top like part of the screen, and if you turn that up, like turn up to fifteen, actually not like to S seven or anything, that'll actually like smooth out some of the lines on its own without like really hindering like the speed of your line. So you can draw things a lot smoother, but. Really, everything comes with practice anyway. So once you get like the motions of the, your hand down, I feel like I end up like instead of 
that's how like one of the things that I've actually set up with my um, tablet is that I can actually like s uh, spin the canvas around a lot like very really, like, quickly and easy like just like move it all around so I keep my hand in pretty much the same exact area and I can just use like the natural like bend of my wrist yeah, to like okay. bring it around and I just like keep like turning the canvas around and, like making a something that at least like kind of resembles a circle at least even though it'll never be like perfect in the first way around yeah. so Actually, you said you had the exact same uh, model as I do, right? Yeah, the same. Because I'm pretty. So I feel like. Actually, do you want to like try and set up um, the the keys that I have, unless unless you already have like a good a decent muscle memory for what you have. I like, really it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you like have something that works for you, it doesn't really like fully matter, but. I feel like it could be more optimized because I didn't, I haven't really set anything up yet. Actually, what's the the little bar on the on the left like set to? Because if it's just like set to the, like, yeah, that's. Zoom and then above that, I just have R. I've like, set it to R, which like gives me the rotate tool. If you like hold it down, you can just like easily take it off and that like, can quickly like quickly and easy without like having to switch tools, sort of yeah. do that. That one's like alt eyedropper. I don't know what that is. Yeah, they have like a lot of like weirder defaults than I use. Mine are like super basic. So yeah, if you set that to R, which I think is the default key for the rotate tool in Psy, and if you get like used to like spinning the canvas a lot more, then actually just try and like rotate your own hand and like mess around with that. That might be better. Is there a way to set up like the other side of the pin like being erased? I think so. Them, like, different. I think so, but I never. Oh yeah, wait. That's because mine is set to select for some reason. I don't know why. Actually, I guess. Yeah. So it seems like the key is M. So if you want that to be the eraser key, then you can cl double click on the eraser tool. Then you go down to shortcut, and you can probably set that to M, which I think might be the default for your pen. And that might become an eraser once you use it. I've never actually tried that. I've always just... Um, either way, you can... I don't know, it does still... That's weird. Wait, maybe I need to... You probably need to set... Probably s change the marquee tool away from M to make it work. Nope, that still does it. Maybe that's like a special interaction, I guess. That's annoying, but. <laughs> and so that doesn't seem to work, actually. I always have the, the key above the rotate tool to E, which is the eraser tool. And that's what I always go to when I want to erase something really quick. The best thing about this tablet is that when you like hold the key down, it like uses the tool as like as long as you're holding it down, but then you take it off and then it becomes like whatever tool you had before. So you can very easily like switch between like pen and then rotate pen and rotate and erase and stuff like that. So that makes things much easier and like much more streamlined once you get used to the muscle memory. But I think Beyond that, I just have, I think actually the lower half, oh wait, the lower half of my keys are all defaults, I think. Yeah, I go, I just have to save and undo. Undo is obviously pretty useful when you have like a set key for it, but. Yeah, I probably need to set them up. So I guess, I want to try and draw something specific, I guess, if you have anything specific in mind. Actually, uh, I've been, been drawing a, a, Lu a Luigi over here. It's yeah. Luigi. It does look pretty good, all, con all things considered. His hat is like turned like a gangster, I guess. I don't <laughs> know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So we do in Brooklyn. And the problem always comes, wait. 
And so, like, didn't you say that you wanted to, like, um, trend towards more, like, realism when it comes to, like, at least, like, like slight realism? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, it's, I don't really know realism quite as well, but I feel like I can, like, try something similar to that. But... It's cursed. <laughs> I feel like... Yeah, I feel like realism is the point where you really want to like get a reference. So I want I want it to be a bu eventually to be like a a, a buff Luigi. This is always where you go to Google and just type just whatever you want and then like drawing reference or pose reference or whatever. You always get something like yeah. something good. And all there's like so much like random stuff. Obviously if you like get used to it on one if you get used to like all the stuff you see here, then it kind of gets kind of old and useless, but at least let's see. It's all female faces. We need a male face that's very like long to work with Luigi. <laughs> Actually, we could do this random guy, I guess. I'll just, I guess I could sit, send you it over. Or, wait, dang it. Just randomly send it to you over, over Discord. And then if we just bring it up on a create canvas. Yeah. So, if we try and like use this guy as like a, a reference for whatever, it's probably better if I copied and pasted it to. Like this doesn't really matter. I'll just change the resolution to this. I always work at like the maximum value of the canvas being three thousand for some reason. It's kind of just been like a habit. It just makes things feel like very like high resolution when I need them to be. I guess I'll just turn this to the other side to to three thousand as well. Actually, this guy looks kind of like. Edward Cullen from the from the Twilight series. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. But there's probably like no good references for long character design faces like <laughs> So be the live action Luigi, the real Luigi. So That's how Luigi sees himself. I guess it's I never really like I don't think I've ever actually like studied specifically from a one single drawing before. So you can try and like assume from where his head is from his hair, which is kind of like a little bit all over the place, but. Also trying to, some things you like kind of cut off in like cartoon designs, like you probably like cut off his, the chin there since it's like so like, it's not like as like, yeah. you know, pronounced as it probably would be for another character. And you have like the, I never really draw this like part of the mouth that kind of like sticks out a bit. It just seems kind of like weird for like character designs that are like more like young, and I guess. I don't know why. And the, And if you want to, I feel like yeah, I can kind of see like my usual shape of the ear in this design. Although obviously, like make the that part like stick out a bit more. You can, like see like exactly like where the all the folds in the ear are. But because no one ever wants to draw like all this like random like what the heck is all this stuff? That, and like why is it even there? Random shapes in the ear. Although that actually, I guess if you like, I guess when it comes to like realism, it works out. But. And then the brow. I always like, for some reason, I always feel like drawing the this little like part of the brow that's like between the actual eyebrows themselves, making like that very like like flowing along with the the nose. But I guess it doesn't usually happen for most people, or like pretty much anyone really. And I would never draw the nostrils either. See, everything looks so much bigger when you like 
draw like thick outlines on it. <laughs> but when you're like, the nose looks so like normal here, but then you draw like cartoony and it's like, oh, that's a big nose. <laughs> yeah. That's why I never do it. The lips are also, the lips are like very like weird, I guess. Cause like the, like, cause obviously they have this like part in the middle that like sticks down, but yeah. when, whenever you're like, it's like the same with the nose, you, like if you pronounce it, it looks kind of weird. And then you can't really get the, the same effect of the normal lips so you like draw like lines over them, but. They always end up looking like Yeah. Like yeah, that's why like most character designs that, that's when like most character designs that, yeah, most like young character designs don't actually have like pronounced lips or like big noses or anything for that yeah. same reason. So you never want to like make it like, go too far. And I remember from seeing like most. I guess if it's like stark lines like this, like in real life, obviously things don't have like like hard outlines on them. Yeah. It just kind of blends together. Yeah. That's why it's not as pronounced in real life. Like the, like we don't see people's lips and well unless they have actually big lips. Yeah. Yeah, that's when it gets kind of annoying when you have to like draw a real person and you don't really get, have, I don't really have like much experience drawing like like normal lips. I always have like, it's either big lips or no lips. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the eye is very like a complicated shape, I guess, because it's like a sphere inside of like another sphere that's kind of like open on one side and then inside of this like, yeah. like lumpy bit of skin. So like yeah. you can see like his eyelid is like, like right here but it's like covered up by this um thing like this like weird little flap of skin underneath the eye socket and then you have like oh, the yeah, he's got like uh what's it called yeah, i think it's called like hooded eyes like when that happens it's just the, the eye type uh, you can see like there's this like little fold right here and i feel like that's one of the folds that i see a lot of people draw when they want to like draw like slightly more realistic eyes that's like below like the the like the point of the the inner point of the eye i don't even know what to call it but yeah. then you have that and then like the since the since the thing is like the eyeball is sort of like round you want to like cut off a little bit here so like the this part is like the meat area of the eye instead of like the eyeball itself and then you have like the, the iris pointing off in that direction and then Kind of have like the the same problem on the other side where it's like a weird shape, shapes within shapes. And then since the the eyebrows are kind of like st kind of like stick out a bit, since the that's where like the the brow kind of like protrudes. Although I mean that is like exactly where it is. It's kind of like it's like a weird little ridge there, I guess, but. I feel like for the sake of a head that's pretty decent, realistically proportioned. Then you can have, you can see where the the widow's peak of his hair is, and I'll probably just like vaguely represent the, the the shape of where like the the edge of the hair is, where like it points out here, and then it like kind of like curves around here and comes to this weird little point here, and then goes down here, and there's like a bunch of like stubble down here, I guess, which is annoying. And it, I guess his hair just like flows out around like this area. But yeah, I feel like at this point is where you sort of like get rid of the reference and then you try and like, or because you kind of like have them both side by side, I guess. And then you sort of like t put on a new layer where you actually try and replicate it without actually tracing over it. Actually, it would probably be if you could find, like, try and find where the um, where like the back of the scalp is, based on like, like, sort of like an assumption of where like the the scalp is behind the, the hair. 
that would definitely like help a lot more like constructing everything since the hair doesn't really like affect anything like it really is all based on where the the scalp is yeah so something like that but yeah i feel like that's i feel like that's pretty much a little uh, de deformation oh yeah this is I guess if you really want to, you can sort of flip the canvas and sort of like fix any little bit of like blemishes. Never draw the Adam's apple either. Down there. Did you do all this neck? No, I, d I just do like a very basic shape. I feel like the head is always more like complicated and stuff. Although you can kind of see where like this guy's neck, or like most people's necks. Like bear, random, just skin lines. Actually, I think I think that might be the clavicle. I'm not sure. Let's see. I feel like that had to be the, the clavicle. The clavicle is like the, like if you feel like just underneath your neck, you can feel like the two like um, bones there. Hold on, I can probably bring up. It's like the like the part you always see like anime characters have underneath their necks. Let's see if I can find a good image of where I drew some clavicles. I don't. I never really. Hold on, sketches. Actually, yeah. probably here. I, these are always how like I draw the clavicles. Like, there's a little bit of line extended from the shoulder, but they actually like come down like a little bit like this in the middle, wherever the the neck is, where it like comes down like this. And so I guess that's what those are, and that's where it, that's one of the things where you have to like think about like when you're like representing a drawing like this, and you're like drawing something from it instead of just like straight from reference. You have to like figure out like what parts you want to like exaggerate and what parts you don't want to exaggerate. And so like I, I pretty much just like started doing that because it's like the classic like sort of like cartoon anime thing to do. Like it seems like so many like anime characters are drawn with their clavicles like this or like some sort of like form like that. But obviously, real people, um, they don't really have like that pronounced clavicles really, especially when like. They're not like super bony and thin, but, um, but yeah, I'll try and replicate the shape of everything from mem from. I wonder if they have a specific like term for like referencing something like this, apart from just like normal reference, where you're not like tracing, but you're not like doing it blind either, but. Down with the head. And of course, since I've spent so much time drawing cartoon characters, drawing something like it's intentionally realistic is like a lot harder since I'm like all of like the cartoon logic is like poisoning my mind. We might have, yeah, you selected something. So go to the top right of the, the, the window. There's a little like eraser button with like a line around it. It's a very tiny button under the view option in the top of the screen. 
yeah, if you press that, a little erase all selections. So you can draw wherever you want. So I think I made this too like rounded. It needs to be a little bit pointier, or at least compared to my tracing of the drawing. Like sticks out a bit. Let's see, like it seems like the brow was like very in line with the with the t the notch of the chin or notch of the ch the nose not anything with the chair I guess if we're you know, drawing like a realistic Luigi, then the big nose actually helps. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'd probably... I might actually do like a, a, a contour lines over the, the original head. Just like try and guess where everything is. It's like the middle of the... Yeah, that's a very big chin. <laughs> he looks like Thanos now. I'm just gonna put these things on. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now he's. Yeah. He's It'd be a good character design trait to have a really big chin like that, but f for realism, we can't do fun stuff. <laughs> You can fuse them together by pressing the the um the th above the layers. There's like a, a scissor button that will like merge the layer below it. Oh, okay. I only got as far as I have because of practice and like brute forcing things. So if you like spend a lot of time like practicing and doing stuff like this, then you'll pretty easily like catch up. Even though I spent like years doing what I have, I pretty much did like no practice and it took me years. Whereas if you t do practice, it'll probably take you a lot less time. So.
Actually, if you want a tip right now, if you select only the chin and you use the deform tool or the deform option of the marquee to, um, selection to move it to the left a little bit, that's usually one of the, actually the chin from the cheek, the top of the cheek, right where the, the notch of the, the eye is. That you usually have to shake or select that entire section. And if you go to the marquee tool and then pixel deform, then move the bottom uh, line to the left a little bit. No, oh, I think. No, th the. Um, the very like bottom line of the the rectangle, like towards the um, the neck. If you move that to the left, with this one, that one I think yeah. If you move that to the left a little bit, yeah, slightly more to the right. Um, I think. I think that is much more t in tune with the the look. I mean, that's just how I always have like the, the problem with the chin when I first draw it. So that's, yeah. I can pretty easily like notice when that part. But yeah, that's usually that's one of the parts I correct with the deform tool a lot when I draw stuff. So also, I think also the back of the neck um, connects farther back behind the, the edge of the chin as well. be longer. That's the old old neckline. I adjusted I put moved everything that way more. But yeah, it looks better. Okay. Actually if you look at my thing for a second, I drew a bunch of like contour lines over the face. So I could like see like where like, the center is and everything. Because you can like feel your face and how it like sticks out to the front. It sort of like it sort of like goes from being like the sides of the face like this to like this part with like the nose. Like right around like this area right here. Like this area is like this area. And so like if you can like mark that out and then mark like where the center of the, the face is, like with this middle line, then it's much easier to like place everything relative to everything else. So like you can just kind of like, like this part of the face is like sort of like the same part of this, as this, just like seen from a different angle. So like this part, you know, obviously see like the chin like right here, but you don't see that part. So like you can kind of like replicate, replicate this thing, replicate one side to the other. I'm not even sure if I'm explaining that well enough, but definitely like trying to, I probably should have done the, the, the contour lines of the face a lot easier or a lot quicker or sooner. So it helps a lot more than just tr tracing over everything. But mm, let's try and put everything back on the right layers. Delete the nose. Actually, I'm also getting the most basic curve of the face, probably. I should do that in a different color.
actually, if you look at my screen one more time, I actually separated the normal contours or the actual like full on contours of the face with like the most basic line of the face where it's like, it's like, this is what, yeah. this is what it would look like if there was no details of the face whatsoever. But then you can see like how like these different like areas like peek out um, from the face, like the nose peeks out like around this distance and like the mouth peeks around about that much. And I think like the chin like kind of like goes out and then in a little bit before it goes up into the, the lip area. And so like you can sort of like see like even when it comes to like the brow, it's like sticks out a little bit more and sort of like use that as a something like that as a um, a starting point, I guess, from for drawing these kind of like details. And that's usually what I do when I draw cartoon characters since you never have like the full on detail of the face to begin with. this and try again. Actually, one thing I've started to do is that if you turn down the density a little bit on your pen tool, that'll actually make it slightly more transparent. But since Sai is like a, like a kind of program where like if you like go over your line again, it'll make like a it'll like start off like transparent, but then as you like put more detail into it, it'll like go into like a full on black. Mm -hmm. So if you use that during your sketch um, phase, then the, the it'll be much easier to like emphasize like the like the like some parts. Oh wait, actually one other thing I noticed. Um, right above the density, there's like right next to the normal drop down menu. You have like those weird little shapes there. That's actually like the fall off of your tool. So if you go to the far right, it'll actually be a much sharper tool, without being like very like uh, soft on the edges. And that'll make much more like solid lines. I don't know. Let's see. Definitely the the. The, the softer parts are better for like shading and stuff, but for sketching, I always go with like super hard. I think. That's weird, you don't have the. And yeah, definitely like learning how to like um, use the, the pen pressure correctly is like one of the the hardest things to get used to i'm still like even getting used to it myself where you can like very easily like like figure out like what the like like letting off like and pushing down of your pen 
to like get different like line weights like very quickly and easily is like a very like hard thing to get used to but once you get used to it it becomes like super helpful and makes everything look better
one thing about real people that I notice a lot more is like weird now that I've drawn like so many characters is that our neck is sort of like they don't like stick out straight they kind of like crane like upwards which is like it makes it look a lot weirder when I'm so used to like drawing characters with, like such straight necks so real people have like they're always like sticking out like straight from their bodies and then curving upwards whereas I never end up drawing it like that How long have we been going? Oh, for an hour. I feel like I've seen, like, even though your face doesn't seem exactly like the, the reference, I feel like I've seen it before. And it's like a really good drawing of like someone else. Like, I've, I could feel like I've pictured like them in my head, but I don't know who exactly it is. Man. Actually, you want to flip your canvas using the top uh, left and right arrow, or not the, no, at the very top of like the, the screen, there's like a left and right arrow button that'll like flip your canvas uh, more to the right. Those are the undo and redo buttons. Next to the normal, yeah, that, that'll like flip your canvas. And now you can sort of like see, yeah, the whole point of it is to see all the mistakes oh, you've made. <laughs> and then you can adjust them accordingly. It like lightens your view of your own drawings. It's so helpful. Okay. It is helpful. Oh God, it's all on different layers again. I need to stop switching layers. Okay, how do you do the the? Um, it's this button right here. Actually, wait, are you using Paint Tool Side One? Oh, yeah, I guess you are. Am I? Yeah, but this, it's been in the same place. It's just the button right here. Merge selected layers. Yeah, I was thinking. Oh. Yeah, and you probably don't want to merge it with the the other layer, so it's yeah. you keep the sketch. And, it's real. Yeah, and at this point, uh, at this point is where I break out the the deform tool and just deform everything into place. And even though probably should stick to the reference and might as well just make it look good according to my own standards. Even if it's slightly unrealistic or more attuned to cartooniness instead of... No, wait. No. I made his chin a lot farther down than... Or the, not the chin, the cheek. A lot farther down than it should have been. I guess maybe his forehead should stick out a little bit farther. And at this point, Drawing a potato on the side of his head. I, I don't know how ears work anymore. <laughs> I usually just make them super like round and circular, even though they're probably not really shaped that way. I'm pretty sure the potato shape is much more realistic. And just make it very like a very basic shape like that. But I might as well try and replicate. The best part about tracing something is that. If you take the line art away from it, you kind of get like a cartoony representation of all those like complex like curves and stuff. So like, like a very like easy realistic thing would be like this weird like, um, like almost like mirror shaped sort of um, ear shape instead of like my normal one where it's like very like almost like an F but weird. You never really get that just by looking at this, the the basic shape of the ear. Wait. 
keep forgetting that I have my sketch pen and my normal pen on the different lip on different tools now. It's, I want to keep the because when I was doing a, tr a line art thing, when I needed like the full on like super solid line art, I was accidentally going to the my pencil, which was always set to this like transparent thing, which I didn't want. So I really had to like separate them. But now I need to like relearn all the muscle, all the muscle memory of figuring things out. So I guess we can... Actually, I think a good change would to bring the nose out more to the left to make it point out, seem like it's pointing out a bit more. I feel like that would be like the main, the main thing there. The nose is always like super pointy, eh? unless you really want to keep it super small and oh, yeah, basic. Yeah, it looks good. You can always just mess around with it until you get it the way you want. Yeah. Looks almost like a discount uh, Peter Quill from yeah, the new Guardians of the Galaxy game. The Guardians of the Galaxy game. Yeah, not Matt, or not, is it Matt Damon? Is that his name? Who, or the, the Chris original? Pratt. Oh, yeah, Chris Pratt. Yeah. I feel like I get those two mixed up a lot. Actually, if you ever want to use different, if you want to like actually use different um, layers for like a single thing, you can create folders for each layer. So you can like group them together and make them much more easily sortable. That only really applies until they start coloring things since the colors always have to be in a different layer, but they also have to be connected to the line art. I feel like this guy's doing that thing that most like beauty models do. <laughs> what? I know. I, I, I think I put too much like. I just think about his lips and the like the lines around his eyes. He looks like he's got like eyeshadow, and he's like. Hmm. Usually for me, when I do that, I kind of like erase the bottom of the like the bottom eyelid more. Like the, I just like make it very like thin, and that usually makes it seem more like. At least like anime in a way, where it's like the only top eyelid has eyelashes, and that makes it look a little bit less like, like, makeup-y. Yeah, what was I just doing? I forgot what I was just doing. Oh yeah, it feels like this guy's doing like the the beauty model thing where they like have their mouth like open like very very slightly instead of being like completely closed i don't know why they always do that but it's like so like weird looking once you actually notice it like they like every single they time that. every single time no, they can't just close their mouth like completely it has to be yeah they have to be like some sort of like weird like like they're breathing ethereally and making them much more like and they pretty never, like full smile it's always like like this neutral like content at most, or they're just uh, scowling because cool. They have to look irrelevant to the the scene around them because it, it'll look too cheesy if they look straight into the camera. Yeah, yeah, they can't look at the camera either. But let's make it. Let's get zany here. 
here. Let's make him a broken. You know, I hate drawing that open mouth thing because it just looks so like, dumb when I draw it like with full on like big lines. <laughs> that just made him look confused. He's just like, he's like, where am I? So I guess if you really want to turn him into a Luigi, then you'll have to break out a lot of... I want to see if I can draw like a, a realistic but cartoony sized mustache. Because I feel like a lot of people are like starting to wear like really like twirly mustaches nowadays. Yeah. It, it looks super weird, but at least it's something you can translate into this. Actually, you know Groose from uh, Skyward Sword? That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I was thinking. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I just seem like you're definitely going far in that direction. I gave him, I 
gave him Groose hair real quick. Oops. Like his head, his head spike needs to be bigger. Yeah. I didn't put it together until just now. Actually, I want. No, my eyebrows are already like. Looks like I'm drawing like a Sims character by the proportions of everything. She probably needs to be brought down a bit to cover. Pretty much all character designs that have really big mustaches are like, they always connect the mouth right to the, the mustache. So like whenever they draw like a mouth is always like coming from the mustache instead of like the like a top upper lip or anything. Actually do you think would you say Luigi has more curly hair in real life yeah, or he does. really curly I think he does. It's all like it's, more. it's all like cartoony puffs, so I guess that's kind of like how they represent curly hair. That's the yeah, that's how they problem is that drawing realistic curly hair is basically a complete nightmare. <laughs> I don't, it's the earring like makes, <laughs> I still have my earring on mine so it just kind of looks like, I, I can't, de I can't describe this. It's, <laughs> he's a freak. What's wrong with this man? You create your own character out of that. I know this is, this is my OC, uh, it's 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 Louis G. It's Louis uh, last initial G. That's how he that's how he goes that's what he goes by. Don't believe this exists. I guess he, he's part he's he's on the Wario side of the fa family because he's got the, the pointy ear. Mm -hmm. like the, the elf ear. Actually, I wonder, I wonder what a real plumber's hat looks like. It's just a. It's all there, just basic baseball caps or like a Mario costume kind of hat. <laughs> so that doesn't really help. Whatever. Yeah. So much for reference. I don't have that specific. <laughs> I was thinking it's almost like. I just kind of wear a hat. It seems almost like beret like. <laughs> that hat's like. That hat's a badass plumber. I'm Luigi. <laughs> that looks like he's a he's a dent in his head. <laughs>
also try and color a little bit at least. Definitely realistic shading is something that's still like super far out of my skill level. So I'll never get that far in a long time, but I can still at least approximate. Actually, if you want to get a more solid um, uh, outline in the stabilizer, there are the, the ones at the very bottom are the ones that actually make it your line super smooth, as opposed to just that one, which kind of like smooths it out afterwards. Which one? Oh, the stabilizer at the top. 
the ones that are all labeled like S stuff, those like make your line like trail behind your pen. So they make it like very, very smooth instead of just like the normal amount. Yeah, and that's always what I use for um, line art since it always makes it so much better.
Vicky. I feel like my style of line art and stuff doesn't lend well to this level of proportions. I feel like if I had like an actual like real pencil to work with, I could almost like try and like shade a lot more. But with this, it's hard to get like the same sort of effect. It doesn't feel natural enough to really go through that with that.
he is. Very colorful. He's he's the cool uh, bro. I don't know what his name is. Well, it has to start with a D, of course. Yeah. I realized all the other bros took all the good colors. Like, can't use red, green, yellow, purple. I mean, purple's open, I think. There's no purple. Not even like a princess's purple. Waluigi. Oh, yeah, Waluigi. Never mind. <laughs> um, and then the sponge, of course, is orange. You can't. Yeah, it's copyrighted by non Nintendo. Yeah, that really isn't an open color. Peach is pink. Even Daisy is orange, if you can take that. Yeah. And Rosalina is like the light blue. Yeah. And then. No one's really like this color, but that's because it's kind of like a weird, ugly blue instead of like a good blue. It looks like something you could create in Sims. Let's go crazy with the design. <laughs> he looks so upset. He doesn't want to exist. Maybe D is for destroy my existence. I don't know. I'm sorry for creating you. I feel like I'm not really sure what else to do really beyond just like, I don't know, shading I guess, but shading is like a whole other, whole other beast. Luigi, what happened? I got his Luigi parts on a different layer so I can edit much more easily. Let's see if how it match matches with the the original. Probably have to get rid of the Luigi parts. It'll probably be hard to get it exactly matched. Oh, oh no! I looked up realistic Luigi. It definitely made his chin a little bit weird. Maybe I'm just... It's so hard to get it in perfect position. He actually made his eyes a little bit higher than they should be. Maybe I overcompensated considering so many of my cartoon characters have like lower eyes instead of high eyes. as you can you can make it all like cartoony and everything you just gotta make a luigi let's see i need a new layer
Seems pretty good for what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. So you cut loose on the on the cartoony features now. Yeah, I feel like like I honestly think like both Mario and Luigi's designs are almost like too like plain. Like I think I I try to do a a design a while ago that was like a a super cartoony version of them. It's just like they feel like so like like nothing really interesting. Like I try to make Mario super like chubby and like more like I guess more like his um Super Mario Super Show form, I guess. Instead of oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think before a long, long time ago I drew a Luigi for like Mario Day. Like both of them for yeah, it was much more. I like the the peach you did as well. Yeah, I thought it'd be more fun to make her like super chubby as well to like match Mario more. And plus, like, peaches and like all fruits are kind of like plump, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, they just feel like Mario specifically is like way too like. I feel like you should be like either like super chubby or super like lanky, I guess. Like, I don't know. It feels like it's way too far in between. Or even something like this, which is just like, like some with some designs, it's almost like just like drawing them better makes them so much better on their own. Like something like this drawing. Wait, it's not even on screen. Something like this drawing is like so much better than like than like these like super like flat designs. This makes them look so much better. And that's why like 2D art is almost like always preferred to everything else, even though it takes longer. <laughs> but... Yep. And you can pair the two side by side. Oh, this thing needs a background, dang it. Get rid of the, that. The exact same character in two different styles. Streaming for an hour and 45 minutes. So. Pretty decent work, I guess. Good. It always takes more practice. Than, everything takes more practice than anything else. Even if I. Just like getting used to using every little tool makes everything so much better once you get used to it all. But. Yeah, but, uh. Oh, this was helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could always go back and reference it as well. Yep. Every single thing. I can remember. Even compare yourself, your recent stuff to your old self. Yeah. Pretty much all you have to do is like pay attention to everything. Like you draw like all the forms and stuff. And then if you do that, everything will like slowly and surely improve as you like notice every little thing that you're doing a little bit more. Because drawing a little bit too absent-mindedly always makes everything a little bit more, like, messy and stuff. But then once you do, like, the, the super, like, focused stuff, then if you go back and do, like, all the messy stuff, then the messy stuff also looks better. Which always makes, you know, practice makes perfect. But really, focus practice makes better perfect than any practice at all. But even if any practice at all is still okay. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'll just turn off the stream then. I don't see any much else we could do that wouldn't take another hour. Yeah. Yeah, for this time. <laughs>